Hello and welcome back to the Mega Man Like mini series. Today I'm going to show you how I did HP pickups and also a life pickup just to show the difference. I might go into the drops as well. And so with that said, let's get started. All right, so instead of just showing you how to make these from scratch, I'm just gonna show you how I made these in the current project that I'm working on. It might be hopefully a quicker video. All right, so here we go. We got a small one, a large pickup and a life. So let's see how we do this. So in the scene here, if you didn't know this, you can click on an object and you can actually edit the base object and it will bring you right to that object. It's nice when you have a longer list of things and even highlights it for you. Okay, so here we are and you'll notice that all three of these are actually the same object. So the small HP is the I pick up HP. This big one is the I pick up HP and the life is also the I pick up HP. And so what I did is I separated their logic uh, based on what they are. So in the scenes tab again, on the small one, I clicked on this action on appearance, and this is the action that it will start in. And I clicked on it's a small HP one. And then on this one, I clicked that it's a big HP. And then on this one, I clicked that it's a life pickup. And you'll notice that that is why I capitalized these ones so that when I'm in this tab picking, it's easier to see. And you can do all sorts of naming conventions that will make this easier to know which one to select. Okay, that's something I use a, a lot. All right, so let's go into what is going on. So in the HP here, what it's doing is it's setting the FOV small switch. Okay, this is a switch that I've created in this object. And it's also setting a pickup amount. So if we go to our variables here, we have a pickup amount. And then in our switches, we have an FOV small, FOV big, and an FOV light. Okay, so let's go over these FOV switches real quick. This object has a fill division, which if you do not know how to add, you go to Cogwheel, set fill division, click OK, and then this tab will pop up. All right, so I've created three. I created a small one, and I and if you have this, uh, apply selected here when you preview you can actually see what it looks like there's that small little fov right there okay so because the small one was going to be I, I didn't want to have the same pickup range as the big one i had to create a different one for each one okay so once i was done setting it i hit unapply so that we can't see the color but the important thing here is that i did this based on a switch and that is that the FOV small is on, okay? The big one, I did the exact same thing, except for I sized it a little bigger. If I preview this, you'll see that it's just a little bigger, all right? And I made the switch be the FOV big. The life, I did the same thing. I made it be FOV life, and I made it a little different shape there. Also adjusted the position. If you need to adjust any position, you'll see that I adjusted the life negative two, the big was zero, zero, and the small was zero, zero. Okay, so these switches dictate whether this FOV is on or not. And if these switches aren't on, then this FOV is not on. So that's why in the action here in the small HP, when I turn FOV small on, that means that this one, because it starts in that small HP small, will get that FOV. And then the big HP, as you can guess, is the FOV of big. And so when it starts, it will get the big FOV and then the life, as you can imagine, will get the FOV life, all right? So let's continue with the small HP and we have a pickup amount and you'll see that the pickup amount is three. So this is gonna be the value that I wanted the pickup to be. So I wanted the small ones to be, you know, three life. And then the HP, I wanted it to be 10 life. So I set the pickup amount to 10. All right, and right after we do that, it's going to um, just remain in its state until it's discovered by the player. Now you can do the player, you can also do the player, ob the player group if you have multiple objects that say you'll have, you have one player and then it can change into another player. The player group will make it to where both those can interact. Right now, the way that I have it, it's hard set, meaning that only this object can get it. So I, I can never change this object or else these pickups won't work. All right. And then we also have a new uh, option right here to target all layers or to not target all layers. All right. That's a new addition, by the way. 
And so then I'm, I'm doing the small detection right there. So then you can imagine on this big one, I'm using the big detection. All right. And then the life, the same thing using the life FOV. And this this condition is called discover other object. If, you, if you're not familiar with it, this is how you set an FOV to be triggered, basically, what FOV, and then what object or group. All right. So now when the HP is picked up, let's see what happens. We go to add one HP. All right, so we're going to add the player's HP. We're going to plus equals, which means add one. And then what we're going to do at the same time is we're going to minus an object self. So this object's uh, pickup amount, we're going to minus one. All right, now remember this pickup amount is three. So since we're minusing one, we haven't completed the task yet. And so in that case, what we're going to do is after a certain amount of time passes, I just a 0 0.01 really quick, because that energy bar usually fills up really quick, you know, when you grab one, but it fills up one at a time. And I like that effect. So then we're going to add an, another HP, basically. So we're going to add another HP, we're going to minus one from the pickup amount again. And then also what I didn't uh, mention in in HP one, but it's also in HP two is we're going to play the sound effect. It's just a quick blip. And I think I changed the pitch and stuff like this. It's actually a little too high volume wise. But um, yeah, we can I can always adjust that later. Alright, so it, it'll play the sound every time it's picking up. And basically, this one is waiting. So so here's your loop, it's going to add one, make a sound, add one, make a sound add one, make a sound, add one, make it sound. So since we are minusing from the pickup amount, every time, we have some checks that are going to be going to destroy the object. And these checks are going to be if the player's HP equals the player's max HP. So that means that it's full life. And then we have an or if the objects pickup amount is less than or equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, we really want the equal to zero. But just in case, I always put a less than or equal to just in case one of those numbers shoot down way too low. Um, it, it'll catch it. So when it equals to zero, that means that it spent the amount that it was worth. And so then that is also going to let us destroy it because it's it's given all the life basically. And this is a processing order of one. So this processing order right here is going to gauge uh, which condition is run first. So when you're in this action, the only conditions that can happen is this one and this one. And so this one is a processing order of zero. And this one is a processing order of one, meaning that it's going to check this one first before it moves to this one. All right. So that's really helpful. And that is really it for the life. I mean, that is how simple it is to pick up. One thing that you might consider is that if you are changing scenes, so for instance, you can see in the basic settings, I have to none. So once you pick this up, it'll be gone forever. Once it destroys, it'll be gone forever. There may be a chance though, that you have this at the end of the scene. And so you pick it up, and then you leave at the same time. All right, so you might want the player to be paused. Well, that can simply just be, you could add in right here, your pause, change game speed, you can go to zero, you can go to no time limit, you can select objects and you could even select well you don't want to select all objects because you want this one to to uh, stay so you could do one for the player group for instance all right so then we're going to hit okay on this one and then we're going to copy it and we're going to do one also for the enemy group because the enemy group will be the the other ones that you want to stop completely as well and you might want one for the player attack if your bullets are a different group as well, or you could just let the bullet keep flying, it, it doesn't matter. But all we would have to do is make sure that at the end here, I'm going to copy both of these, and then I'm going to go back to destroy. And then before we destroy, I'm going to bring them both back up to game speed, basically. All right. So now if we play here, I will uh, pick up the the small one just normally here. All 
actually. Oh, it's uh, I, I put it in the wrong spot. My bad. So I'm going to copy these right here. And I'm going to just put them into this one. And it, and it doesn't matter that it's reapplying it every time. See, I started it in here and I, I was paused as soon as I play tested. So here we go. I'm going to grab one. And then here I'm going to jump to on this one. You'll see that I, I freeze in the midair while it's filling up. There we go. And then we're back. And that way, if you, because the issue is, is if you grab this and then you portal transition out. And if it was in here at the time that you were grabbing it, if it was doing this loop, then it will never destroy. And when you come back in, it, it will be reset basically. Okay. So it, it wasn't destroying, so it will be reset. And so you don't want that to happen. So I think pausing the player right here is a, is a fine thing. Okay, so real quickly, let's go over the life here. And the life, I'm setting the, the life on here. And I'm deleting the filter effects. And the reason why is, is for the jump here. So w you'll notice that I have the life doing a little hop. It does a little hop. It flashes just a little bit of juice there. So this delete filter it doesn't need to be run at the start, but it does need to be run during this, this loop here. So basically, after a certain amount of time, it passes about one second, it goes to a small little jump here where I do a jump. It's about 80% uh, uh, jump speed here. I apply a filter. I do a little white flash of 200% opacity, zero time completion. It lasts for 0.1 second. And then this one also deletes, it, it says to delete in 0.2 seconds. And then when it makes contact with the wall detection, so, cause it does a jump, right? So when it lands basically, so when it lands, it's gonna go back to life. And this is just to make sure that it is deleted because it might be a, a little hop or, you know, the game might lag for just a second and lose a little bit of jump. So I just wanted to make sure that that delete filter was applied right away. All right. Now, both of these have the same link for the, the life FOV being touched by the player. And you'll notice that this one is priority one. This one didn't need to be priority one because there was no other link. But this one I wanted priority one because we have these other links now going into this jump here. So then we have a pickup life. It's going to audio play the life. And what it's going to do is it's going to check and make sure that lives is less than 99. Basically, I didn't want to go over 100 lives. And so this would be where that check is. If it is less than 99, then it's going to simply add a life. And I did this in the common folder, or sorry, I did this as a common variable, which you're going to want. You're gonna want it as a common, not a, not a self variable. And it's gonna add plus one to the lives. And then, it's going to just unconditionally go to destroy. And then on this check, if it is, because you'll see that this is processing order of zero, this is a processing order of one. So it checks this first, is life less than 99? It goes this way. If not, it just goes straight to destroy. But it plays up the audio and you can pick it up. I, I made it to where you can pick it up whether you can use it or not. And the HP is the same way. As soon as you pick it up, if you don't have if you don't need it, it's going to destroy, but it's still going to play that audio feedback and it's still going to do things like this. All right. So real quickly, let's also go into the object settings here and you can see that it's a neutral item actually. And then it just has the animation and this animation contains everything that you'll need. So if you have an HP, MP, life, energy, what name it, you'll need it on this animation. All right. And then I just have it to where it, has contact with tile walls so that the the life that does the little jump will will be able to land and then it will detect the floor basically and the other lives as well and then on the player the only thing that we had to do was we had to make sure well yeah we didn't even have to make sure that it can detect the stuff because we're using fov you do not have to with fov you don't have to have any wall detections or anything you can literally just have it you can literally just use the check right here to determine this small. Now this field of vision goes off the wall detection of the incoming object. So the wall detection of the player is actually what triggers the FOV, just in case you were unfamiliar with that. 
All right, so real quick, let's go into the drop now. Okay, so the drop, this basically happens on any enemy. If I go and find a quick enemy here. All right, so here's an example of an enemy. They have a common action when they reach HP equals zero, then they jump to this dead common action and they generate an object right here. And it's called eye drop. And this is 100% chance. So a lot of times you could have a pickup that you could use probability right here and you can make it a less percent chance. But I actually wanted to control the probability inside the object. So I made this object generate 100% of the time. All right, so now let's go to that object. And one tip here is you can go to search here and you can t start typing in the name. So we can say drop and then boom, drop HP. There's the object that I was looking for. And so basically it starts right here and it determines the HP drop size. And we're gonna use probability to do that. So 50% of the time, it's gonna drop a small HP. 10% of the time, it will drop a big HP. And then the rest, you'll see that unconditionally, the rest is going to be uh, none, and it's just going to go uh, straight to destroy. And I don't I, I put none here just to clarify. I could have just made the link right to destroy, but I just said none here just for visual clarification. And you will notice that for probability, you have to set it in the order that you want it to attempt. So for instance, I wanted to attempt this, the small HP first. I want this to always be attempted first, so I set this to 2. This next one I set to 1 because I want it to be the second one checked. And again, it's got a low percent chance. So then the last thing is, is that it's going to fall. So these have gravity, these are normal, and they perform a small little hop. So when you destroy them, it performs a small little hop, and then it starts falling down. And you'll see that I have the exact same things, FOV small, pickup amount, FOV big, pickup amount. And then we have the same checks from here. Did we discover the object with the FOV? If we did, then we add. And then if not, or, and then if it's uh, HP equals max HP, or if the max mount is uh, done equals zero or less, then we go to destroy, all right? And so that is how those work. We can see that uh, once again, we can just pick them up and now it, it pauses and there we go. So hopefully that was helpful. Is there any questions? Leave them in the comments below, Steam or the Discord. We'll get back to you. With that said, I'll see you at the next video.